course, this happens. We're still going to play cars today, but with the uh, door shut. All right, well, here we go. You guys saw the engine transmission all get dumped out here on the frame. Saw the disc brake conversion kit get installed. Got both sides all squared away. Still have to do the steering linkage. Might do a video on that. Haven't decided yet. Um, and then I've got the distributor. You guys saw me reconfigure the distributor, get it ready to go, and got rid of the points, so now it becomes pointless. Ha. Um, but that has that new electronic setup in it. I have a coil here. We're going to try to run it with this coil. Now, I'm not 100% convinced that it'll work because it says you just use a resistance wire. And I guess we'll find out. Hopefully it works. If not, I'll have to order a coil. But this would be kind of fun to test fire. It's my hopes and goals and wishes today. Now, you'll see here a carburetor. This carburetor I actually bought on the old interweb. It is a recreation of a 1968 Quadrajet that would have came on the car from the factory. I bought this fuel line pre-bent for a 1968 V8 Firebird. Fit phenomenally, even with this carburetor. So, so far, so good. The carburetor comes as a nice assembly, but does not come with the choke here, the heat riser style choke. They use that bimetal coil. So as it heats up, it'll actually push the choke actually open here like this. It'll actually push it up. Now, like I said, it didn't come with that, but I was able to salvage this off of a two barrel. Now, if you guys are really sharp, you know, they'll tell me, hey, John, the two barrel coils actually pull down as they heat up and not push up. Now, you take this thing apart, you can flip that coil over and make it work backwards. And I bent my own custom little link here. So I don't know if that's going to work 100%. Bit of an experiment, but I'm trying to save 40 bucks. I know it sounds kind of cheap, but 40 bucks is 40 bucks, yo. So I'm hoping that's going to work. So we're going to do some testing on that. Now my accessory drive. Now, this is the original alternator. It was on the Great Pumpkin when I pulled it in the garage. I've got this bracket still getting paint. There's the bracket goes from here to here. They're in paint, so they're not quite ready yet, but we're going to see if the, the alternator goes round and round. But like I said, I completely took that apart, cleaned it, sandblasted it, went through what I could find out, looked at. It seems to be pretty good. Power steering, same thing. Took the whole thing apart, sandblasted it, pulled the pulley off it, went through the brackets and tightened everything all up. So now the power steering is all great in alignment. I have an AC pulley ordered for my buddy louie he's gonna be sending that to me we're gonna run an ac compressor up here vintage air kit because most cars are gonna go to florida when it's done and we need air conditioning so i've got to take some of this a little bit back apart and put the v-groove pulley down there but i wanted to put it together enough to make sure my fan's gonna work make sure everything's gonna spin make sure i have no leaks in the power steering so i can do some checking on everything before we stab this back in the car body that's the point of firing it up down here Go through some system checks, check for leaks, check for any kind of problem. It's a whole lot easier to fix now than once it's all back inside of a car tucked up under the hood. So love it, hate it, or disagree. This is just how I like to do it. I like to run them through here, run them through their paces a little bit and verify it's gonna do what it needs to do. Now check this fan out here. I know it's not that impressive necessarily, but it's a clutch fan. I acquired that from a fella. He had a box full of goodies he'd found in his garage, collected over the years. That he didn't want. So basically, that was one of the parts that was included in it. I didn't really ever think about it when I first acquired the bits, but that is a perfect fit for this car. So I said he gave me the parts basically for just the cost of shipping. I've got that. I have a pile of other goodies, a clutch, flywheel. I can't even remember all I got. So appreciate you sending me those and hooking me up or even asking if I was even interested because check this out. That fan is going to go back to use on a car, back to life. So that's the whole side over here. Now, I've got some battery cables I had made up. I uh, made these up real nice, color-coded, because the uh, the owner had a bit of a problem here. They weren't very well labeled. Hooked them up backwards and whoo, let the smoke out of a lot of stuff. Um, that's all this side here. I've got the factory harness hooked up. We're going to use this to hotwire the uh, coil for the ignition. And we're also going to bump the starter with. I'll show you which wires those are here in a moment. And then on the driver's side here, starter is installed. Power steering units all completely configured and ready to go so i think i think it's time we can find a battery i'm gonna lay it right there get a gas can we're gonna pull my little hose here off dump it into the gas can and see if we can draw some fuel in here and see if we get this thing to fire up today hey do you have what it takes to be vvg certified well our first one to go around here is a 1980 pontiac sunbird formula less than 2000 these bad boys were made this one belongs to kevin he's owned these i guess they sunbirds most of his life but he found this one here recently started putting it all back together in his own two-car garage and doing most work so i wanted to show you a little bit what we'd found 
And what you see here, of course, you, you find the thing in the field and uh, you dig it out and put it on your trailer, haul it home and get the tearing the thing apart. You might find a few surprises in this case here. Well, this car, you can't buy parts for these things. You have to scrounge, fight, punch, jab, whatever you got to do to get your hands on some of this stuff. So a lot of this stuff is hand fab, but if you put it up here on the rotisserie, and I started finding some of the damages. And of course, went ahead and did the uh, dustless blasting thing, which worked really nice for him. He really liked it. Still on the fence whether I love it or not, but check this out. Definitely VVG certified. This garage looks like my stuff everywhere, but that's part of the process, making it work. Now coming together, getting things cleaned up and primed, ready to paint. Got the whole thing looks like all in primer now. So getting a whole lot closer. Went ahead and did the underbody in a Raptor undercoating and then painted it body color. Super clean looking. I like this results a bunch. And then of course doing some of the trimming and the edging and getting all the paint ready to be painted for the final coat, but not quite done yet, but getting really super close. So Kevin, you are officially VVG certified. Appreciate you sending your submission. If you'd like to add your card to the list of VVG certified, check out the link in the video description in the email, send it to me and I'll get your car posted in the camera. Let's get back to the build. All right, well, let's get started. I'm going to lay this down. I'll put a battery up here, like so. Yeah. And I'll hook up a positive. Now what I'm gonna do first off, I'm gonna bump the starter here, make sure it's gonna turn over. Give it a go that way. That's the battery I stole out of the, uh, the goat. Now, on our big plug here, we need to find the big purple wire. That is one that goes down to the starter. So if I were to add a 12 volt positive signal right here to that terminal, I should be able to get the engine to turn over. Now it's clearly not gonna start because I have no gas, I don't have a spark, but I want to bump the starter to make sure one, it works, and then just check it out and see what it sounds like. Okay, now, how are we gonna do that? I've got some test leads here. These are super handy and I think they're kinda nice to have. What we're going to do, we're going to hook one up to the positive battery cable here. And then, like I said, we should be able to now take this here and bump the purple wire, and this thing should crank over. <laughs> and it actually does. Now, that starter sounds like it's dragging a little bit, so I think we need to add a shim to it. So let me go grab one of those. Well, I've got an assortment of shims, like 164th, 132nd, and no measurements whatsoever stamped onto it. And I'm gonna put a shim or two here. It goes between the block and the starters. Currently, I don't have any. Sounds a little tight, the gear lash, and that really needs to be set. And check this out, it's gonna be super easy to install that shim now as opposed to putting this car all back together. <clears throat> all right, now the thing to keep in mind, if you look at the starter shim, the inside hole closest to the oil pan is slotted. The outside hole, of course, is the actual hole for the bolt to go through. So that being said, you just loosen up the inside bolt close to the oil pan. Just get it loose so you can slide your shim in. And the outside bolt, you have to remove completely. So I've got that broke loose. Take that out. And we'll take these shims here. We've got the inside one already loose. And hopefully, there you go. Now, I will now put... There we go, that bolt back in. Now it's not goes up and we'll see what it sounds like. All right, got the shim edge all done there. We're gonna bump the starter here one more time to kind of get a, fear, a feel for what that sounds like. Now, I'm not sure how well it picks up on the camera. That sounds a lot better. I actually like the sound of that. It sounded a little tight before. It wasn't the worst I've ever heard, but there is a procedure for shimming those, but I typically just kind of throw a shim at a time until I get to the sound where I like it. So I think the next thing to do now, um, I'm gonna hook up the, uh, coil here and see if we can get spark out of it. All right, now when it comes to the ignition, it's very similar. On our big plug that goes to the firewall bulkhead, there's a pink wire here, which is the top one on this side. So the top one here is your starter, top one here goes to our ignition. So if I add 12 volt positive to that, that'll turn my ignition on. Same thing as basically turning your key on inside the dash. So I'll go ahead and hook this to here. If I touch it to this battery, green wire again, don't know if that's picking it up or not, but every time I touch it and let go, I can hear click, 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 click go underneath the distributor cap. So I actually have spark. So I think maybe the thing to do is go ahead and hook up our fuel line, we'll go ahead and hit the starter, see if this thing will go. So let me get a gas can here and we'll get that thing doctored up. Okay, now what we're talking about here on this fuel line, this is the one I ran here from the very beginning. That was kind of step one during the assembly. 
put the lines in. So I'm gonna put a piece of, I got some 3 8 rubber hose here. We're gonna stab that on the end of there and put that in a gas can and see if we can't siphon some fuel from the can into the engine. Okay, fuel line is hooked up there to the feed. And come over here, our little gas can. I like to only find about a gallon, or maybe three quarters of a gallon of mixed fuel. So it won't hurt a thing to put a hole on the top half of this engine. May smoke a little bit, but I'm gonna crank on it. This fuel system is completely dry, so it's gonna take a while. But I might go ahead and hook up the ignition. That way when it does finally get there, maybe this thing will go ahead and light off and go. Now the fuel ain't being hooked up. What I'm gonna do, you can see down in here, there's the uh, accelerator pump jets. I don't have any fuel yet, so I need to crank on it for a while to get the fuel to go from our fuel line here to the fuel pump all the way up here and then fill up the carburetor up. So I'm going to crank on here for a little bit with just the uh, starter and see if I can get some gas to shoot in here. Because by the time it does work, you'll be able to see some fuel shoot from the jet. So I'm going to crank on here for a few moments. Now again, as simple as this, take our red wire, touch it to the purple lead. <laughs> I've cranked on here for a good bit. I'm afraid I'm going to kill the battery, but you hit the accelerator here. Nothing. The other thing we could do, we could dump some fuel down in the fuel bowl and cheat here a little bit. And I'll crank the engine a little quicker than maybe get that fuel pump to work. So I'm going to get a little bit of fuel and we'll dump it down in here. Of course, in a situation where I get to use my paint cap, I love these things for so much. So I could check us out. You can turn into our perfect little funnel to help divide this thing or get it to go where it needs to be. I don't see we can't fill the fuel ball up. Let's put a little something in the bottom of it here. Alright, that should be enough to make the pump go here. We'll see what happens. Right, let me show you what we've got now. If you look down the carburetor, I got the choke partially propped open. Now if I hit the accelerator here. Same as this pump will move here a little bit. You'll see a little fuel, hopefully. There you go. Oh, yeah, you saw that, uh, that jet. I don't want to flood it, but it came out right there. So I think it's going to turn the ignition on. Let's see what happens. Well, okay. I say we're ready to start, but we're going to put this over here by what we're doing here because, you know, I suppose anything's possible. I guess a little bit of safety won't hurt nothing at all, but got some fuel in there. I've already set the choke, hit the throttle once, so hook up the ignition here. Green to the pink wire, and then let's bump the starter. I guess here goes nothing. does run here now what i need to do is get the cooling system all up to par and get some hose clamps for it i just can't seem to find any here i don't want to go for a road trip but I guess it's road trip time that way i can get it through a couple of heat cycles and check for leaks maybe run the transmission through the gears a little bit here and we'll check the power steering for leaks because that's the idea here get the thing actually fired right up really nice where it runs here on the frame and go through a bunch of system checks a couple operational checks like I said, it's a whole lot easier to me, in my opinion, to fix any issues if there were any right now as opposed to being back in an assembled car. So that was kind of the goal here. But uh, this thing didn't fight me at all. This is more like how it goes now. My great pump, the my great pump, the uh, Legoat, my GTO, that car just, I think, hates me. This is typically how things go for me. Really get pretty lucky most time, get everything all dialed in. 
hit the key, fires right up and goes. Now, I'm not 100% convinced the fuel pump's working. The only way we got that thing to go is I had to fill a fuel bowl with some fuel. But again, I can't let it run too long because the garage door is shut and I don't have any cool in it. But that is pretty awesome. It does run, so definitely a whole lot closer. It's like a big mile, so it makes you feel pretty good when you get something like that. You hit the key or I guess you say bump the little starter, fires right up. It's kind of a nice feeling to know that your work is starting to pay off. Engine sounds great. Actually, I look really nice right out of the box. I haven't done nothing to that carburetor yet besides put it on and dump some fuel down. So, so far, so good. Really liking that thing. So anyway, I'm gonna get some more bits and pieces, get this thing ran through a few heat cycles, and make sure I don't have any leaks or complications, and then we'll keep plugging away and get this thing hooked up to the body here behind me. So look forward to that video soon, putting the subframe back on the body. I've got a couple brake lines yet to run on the body before I flip it down, because um that's a whole lot easier to do now i've also got to do a video on this car flipper thing i've been working on it and getting the measurements but i just need to stop and do a video because some of you guys have been asking about that and see if i can help you engineer and build one for you because i'll tell you what i built that five years ago for my first car for one-time use this is the third time i've used it now so it is super beneficial so, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button share with your friends help us grow this channel and we'll keep these birds going and keep them alive and keep you inspired on your project so in the meantime you guys stay safe out there i'm running to the store get some more pieces and put some time on this thing and let you know what we find on the next go around and we'll see you then